Hey everyone, Jeff here. Uh, today I've got a quick vinyl update to do. Uh, just a little stack here, nothing too crazy. But uh, hopefully you guys are all doing well. Hopefully you dig this video. And uh, I'm just going to get started right away. The first thing I want to show is Criminal Record by Rick, Rick Wakeman. Uh, of course, he's known as uh, playing with Yes, Black Sabbath, um, Straubs. Uh, very well-known keyboard player in the progressive rock and rock world in general and uh, his solo material is notoriously kind of up and down uh, six wives of henry the eighth is pretty much universally agreed upon to be his best album and this one's this one's okay it's nothing to blow you away or anything but a decent album from rick wakeman and i collect a lot of uh yes and yes related things so I made sure to pick that up when I saw it for only a dollar or two at a flea market. Uh, got, let's see, I got a lot of fusion in here, so maybe I'll get that out of the way first. Uh, first one, Dreams. Uh, this isn't necessarily a fusion album per se, but it features a lot of musicians that would go on to be pretty big names in fusion, uh, such as Billy Cobham, the Brecker Brothers, and uh, who else is on here? John Abercrombie plays some lead guitar here. So, really, kind of interesting record. Uh, a lot of folks in the VC love this one. And it's horn rock, kind of like uh, Chicago or Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Uh, but definitely a little bit more rooted in jazz than those groups. It feels a little bit more free. Uh, really decent record. Not Certainly not the best thing that most of these guys have played on. But a cool little uh, record for fans of the musicians involved and groups like Chicago or Blood, Sweat, and Tears. So, decent album. Another fusion one here, uh, Livestock by Brand X. Uh, I found this a couple days ago for $2 in a record store. Uh, I was in the bargain bin, and I really, really like Brand X. Um, it was a fusion group from England that most notably had Phil Collins from Genesis on drums. And um, this is a live record, and it's really, really good playing throughout. And uh, if you dig Brand X, this will probably be something that you'd like to have in your collection. So uh, very happy to have that. Let's see, another fusion one here is uh, Sonata Erotica by Jean-Luc Ponty. Uh, I am a huge fan of Jean-Luc Ponty. Um, a lot of his solo records uh, rank up as some of my favorite fusion albums ever. Um, Enigmatic Ocean particularly being probably my favorite of his. So uh, I keep an eye out for anything Jean-Luc Ponty. And this was um, released on the Inner City label. It's live. And I believe in the rest of the world this had a different title, like Live at Montreux 72 or something like that. But uh, this actually, I wouldn't rank up there as one of his best records. Um, it's, it's definitely not as structured as some of his other stuff. And it kind of feels a bit too meandering in my opinion at times. But still cool to get. And it's on a really nice looking Inner City label. So uh, this was originally $9.99, but one of my local record stores was having a 50% off sale, so I only paid 5 bucks for it. Uh, so definitely a good deal and something cool to add to the Jean-Luc Ponty collection. Uh, let's see, got a couple more fusion here, I think, or at least jazz. Uh, Night Passage by Weather Report. Um, very, very good album. I really, really dig Weather Report, particularly... The Black Market album, which I consider to be their masterpiece and one of the best fusion albums ever. But this is this is very good. Um, you know, probably like seven out of ten I would give it. Uh, good good songs throughout, really good playing especially, and uh, it's well produced. So if you're a fan of Weather Report, can't really go wrong with this one. Also have uh, this right here, Keith Jarrett, uh, Arbor Zena. I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, Ar Arbor Zena. Uh, this is on the ECM label, and uh, I really dig the minimalistic cover here. But anyway, Jean Garbrecht is on saxophone, and Charlie Hayden is on bass. So really, really great players throughout here, and it also features um, an orchestra. So it's it's really interesting, kind of like a third stream sounding stuff. Uh, nice mix of jazz and classical, kind of ambient. Um, it's a little bit hard to explain this record because it's very unique, but uh, if you dig ECM releases generally, uh, this should be up your alley. If you like Keith Jarrett, you'll probably enjoy this. So uh, yeah, Arbor Zena, pretty good record. 
let's see. I know I have an yeah. So here I think will be the last jazz record I have to show. Uh, Pendulum by the Dave Liebman Quintet. Uh, this was released on the Artist's House label, I believe, and uh, it's a it's a decent album. It's not my favorite Dave Liebman. Uh, I remember liking Drum Ode and Lookout Farm a bit, uh, quite a bit more than this one, but it's still very very good, and uh, the playing is great throughout here. So if you're a fan of Dave, Lieb Dave Liebman and uh, just that style of jazz in general. Pendulum is certainly not a bad record to have in your collection. I paid three dollars for it. So very cool to get this. Now I'm gonna move into well, I have one metal album to show, so I'll get that out of the way right now. And that is Dream Evil by Dio. Uh this isn't one of Dio's best records in my opinion. Uh Holy Diver will always be his best. Well, you know, he's passed away unfortunately. But this is this is all right. Uh, it's got some good tunes. It's a little bit too sleek and predictable in my opinion, but still a decent album. If you're a fan of 80s traditional heavy metal, this should be up your alley. Uh, also, let's see. I've got a couple like more ambient style releases, so I'll show those right now. Uh, first one will be Kites by Jade Warrior. Uh, this is a very Chinese inspired album uh, definitely borrows a lot from the folk traditions in China and uh, the music is very ambient has a lot of space and uh, it very uniquely sounds like Jade Warrior so if you're a fan of this group uh, I would recommend picking this up and I was lucky to find this for only a couple bucks at a flea market but really decent album here then I also have behind the gardens behind the wall under the tree by Andreas Vollenweider. Um, he's put out a bunch of decent albums, nothing that's really blown me away. But if you're into new age music, uh, really spacey, kind of ambient, uh, this is this is worth checking out. It's very melodic too, so it's not too esoteric or anything. But uh, decent record, and if you can find it for cheap, I'd recommend picking it up. Let's see, the rest here are going to be rock oriented albums a little bit of prog too uh first one grace and danger by john martin uh, i picked this up because phil collins is on drums and i've heard some good things about john martin albums this is okay i guess it's just way too smooth and commercial sounding for me it's just not my thing to be honest and uh you know if you if you see this and you think you might like it it might be worth a shot but for me this is just too sleek and too poppy sounding but still cool to get i guess i only paid a dollar for it so not much was lost uh slow motion by man uh, these guys were kind of like a bluesy hard rock progressive rock band uh from the 70s and this is not usually renowned as one of their best albums the cover art's great music's okay it has its moments but uh by and large it's not something i'll be revisiting too often and i paid five dollars for it so not bad also got Pretzel Logic by Steely Dan. Steely Dan is one of those groups that a lot of folks love, but I just can't get into. Again, kind of the same criticism I have with the John Martin record, where it just feels way too slick and calculated for my taste. Uh, just Steely Dan, for me, at least the records that I've heard, it doesn't feel like there's much bite to it. It just feels very safe and uh, you know something that you would show your parents and they'd be like oh that's that's nice uh just really not up my alley it's it's okay very good musicianship and i can't knock that at all but just not totally for me so pretzel logic now these next two records here are the highlight of this video i think uh, the first one is i advance masked by andy summers and robert fripp andy summers of course being from the police and robert fripp being from king crimson and 500 other things but um this is a very, very cool record. It's uh, it's almost hard to describe. It's it's uh, if you're a fan of '80s King Crimson, you might like this. It's instrumental, um, like kind of. Uh, there's some there's synthesizer work. It's very spacey. Um, it's pretty cool stuff, honestly. I wish it had a little bit more percussion, but that would really be the only knock I could give this. It's a cool record, and uh, if you're a fan of these two guitarists this is definitely worth picking up and i've been searching for this for months 
and I happened to find it in a bargain bin at a record store a couple days ago for two dollars. So uh, really, really cool. And the last thing I'm going to show is the self-titled album from Ptarmigan, and I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm not sure. Uh, really, really nice cover art, and this is a 2014 reissue. These guys, I believe, were Canadian, and uh, when this first came out, it really went unnoticed, and uh, thanks to a couple of reissues, it's kind of been checked out by some people, but if you're not familiar with this band, it's like, uh, it's very folk-inspired with a little bit of rock and a little bit of prog and a little bit of psychedelia. So um, it's right up my alley. It's a very forward thinking release. It's very, um, very progressive in the, in the songwriting approach. And it's just, it's interesting. It, it really covers a lot of ground and it, it, it does a lot of cool things. So if you're into progressive music and you dig folk, uh, this is definitely worth tracking down. An original probably goes for hundreds of dollars these days. But uh, this 2014 reissue is very, very good. Sounds great, nice vinyl, and it comes with some really cool liner notes too. So Ptarmigan is highly recommended for me. And that's all I have to show today. So like I said, not a, not a huge update, but enough records uh, that you know I think this made for a decent video. So hopefully you guys uh, dig this and leave a comment down below if you do. Let me know what you think of some of these records. And also, um, I'm thinking about getting an all-in-one turntable to put in my bedroom. Uh, just due to space constraints, I really can't set up a stereo up there. But I'd really like to have the ability to listen to some vinyl up there. So if you guys have any experience with those all-in-one turntables where, you know, it's the speakers, preamp, receiver, turntable, all-in-one unit, uh, let me know. And, you know, if you'd recommend a certain model or something like that, because I do plan on getting one within the next week or so. So thanks to everyone for watching and I'll see you next time.